Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Pissed Off Piston Garage. This video is being made during the installation video of reassembling the front end. It's just there's a lot to be done and I can't sit around and wait while parts come in. So this video is going to be about restoring the front doghouse. I mean, we did all of this beautiful work that I'm very happy with and that's underneath the car. No one's gonna really see it. They're gonna see the outside. So we are going to start restoring the front end. So a few things to note. Yep, the car's really dirty. That's fine, I'm gonna clean it up. But I'm um, gonna grind down this weld here. There was a nasty little dent here. And then uh, we welded a washer to it, pulled it, and then it pulled it because the dent was up and then it sunk down. And then, um, so there's a tiny low spot, but this is just the weld. So that needs to be ground down. That, this needs to be uh, finished. We're gonna prime all this. Uh, unfortunately, I found some rust like there and there. And uh, I did this when I was like 17, I think, 16 or 17. I cleaned it up, but apparently I didn't do a good enough job. So gonna be sanding it all down, just all of the trunk area, except for like the weather stripping area, just all of this gonna get sanded down. So there's that, and then we're all gonna prime it. Got my new hood here. Let me move my uh, creeper. Got my new hood. Uh, my dad picked that up for me in Ohio, as well as that piece. Um, we found a pretty nasty high spot here, and so we had to uh, grind away the uh, putty there, and then heat it up, and then smack it with a hammer. Uh, that's how you shrink metal. So we gotta fix that. Um, we have to fix the uh, area here. See how that's like not very clean yet. Coming around here, we have some welding to do there. Uh, and then this here area is a little, little messed up. So our, uh, we're gonna clean this up really nicely and then we're gonna let it. Instead of putty trying to weld and then putty it, we're gonna let it and call her, call her good. So there's that. Uh, yeah, and then uh, basically that putty there is a really, that's basically all good. Yeah, I don't feel any high spots or anything there. So, yeah. So I think what I wanna do first is I want to strip this hood. And what I'm gonna use for that is this chemical stripper. Uh, this isn't necessarily meant for uh, car stuff. Um, I'm unfortunately out, but this stuff is for wood, metal, and masonry and stuff like that. So that's what we're gonna use it on. So let me set up some saw horses, get the hood up there. Uh, in a completely separate video, when I work on the back end, I am going to uh, work on this. However, because I'm gonna be stripping stuff, might as well just strip this one as well. I don't know, we'll see. And we're back. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I have an old squeegee that is just really good for taking that down. Also, I do have plastic on the floor uh, because this will eat the cement floor. So that's another thing. Just gotta try to preserve that. So what we're gonna do, wait, safety glasses. I have worked with this stuff since I was 16. Nope, that's a lie. I don't know how old I was. I've just been working with this for a while, so I know what to expect. And this stripper here is a little old, so I don't know if it's going to, you know, work the greatest. But you just kind of use liberal amounts. Kind of like that. I don't know if you can even pick that up. It's already eating it right here. If I just put it on, it's already starting to take it up. And what I can tell you right now is I need to use more. I'm going fast because look at that. It's already starting to eat my brush. So... Just gotta keep going, because I don't have many brushes. Man, this is bringing back memories. I remember being in high school, getting off work at my first part-time job at just a fast food restaurant. Whoa, that hit the floor. And uh, come home, because I was trying to get the car done by prom. And uh, obviously that never happened, but I was trying to get it done by prom, so I'd come home from work at 10, get changed into crappy clothes and be out here till like two in the morning, stripping down the paint, 
uh, sanding, stuff like that, and that was while I was in high school, and uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, but look at that, see how that's just, let me grab my, uh, my whatchamacallit here, watch, ready? Ah, oh, look at that, straight down to the old primer. See, it's really starting to lift the layer. Probably gonna have to do a few layers of this. Here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a container to catch that in. I actually really like the look of that there. It kinda looks like a galaxy or something along those lines. <laughs> So, unfortunately, it's not doing that cool bubbling, crackling stuff that it does. So, as I said earlier, my dad picked up the hood that's right there. He picked that up in Ohio, and at the same time, he got this piece. The guy he got it from was really nice. He was a Corvair guy through and through, and he threw this in with the purchase of the hood. So, that's that was really nice of him. Uh, but when we got that, this was, like, heavily coated in grease. And uh, so I power washed it, degreased it, and it's actually in really nice shape, not much rust at all. And I think having the grease on it really saved it. But uh, let's see what happens if we do this. Anyway, so other than there not being any rust, I did notice right here there's a small dent, but I'm not too concerned about it. Nothing that we can't pound out from the other side, just gently hit it with a body hammer okay so uh i just realized that i hadn't been recording for like the past 10 minutes uh so that was unfortunate because i was just talking and you know no one was listening so all i did was i took a, a shop towel here one of those folded that up and i just basically went down the length of it to get as much of the excess stuff off as i could that's what I did there. So I just got done cleaning up in here, moved the hood back over there, uh, cleaned up some water, cleaned up the plastic. I'm going to go and hang this on my clothesline to let it dry. I'm sure my mom will love that. But uh, I don't know what was in that paint, but it smells like blueberries in my garage. So I picked this up, aircraft stripper, uh, and this stuff is um, much more intense than the uh, previous stuff that I was using. So... Yeah, I'm actually wearing an apron. I'm going to be wearing chemical gloves, safety glasses, all of that. Uh, so we're going to try that out. I just have to be careful because I do have my uh, nephew and my mom out here. So just make sure my nephew doesn't touch anything. Not sure how long it's been. Um... Honestly, I was expecting like the paint to bubble and crackle up like, you know, how the other stripper did. But uh, this not so much. Oh, it's not even in focus. Maybe a little right there, but it's said to let it completely dry for 45 minutes. And then I also flipped this over and did this side. Um, okay, well, it's been like going on an hour and uh, yeah. That, uh, that did not work, like, at all. If I come over here, you can see there, it's just scraping it up, and it did nothing to that primer. Like, here, what about? Okay, well, that's a little upsetting. Oh, what is, is that bare metal? That little area is like the only place that it's stripped up. Just like most of my previous relationships, that was a waste of my time. Uh, got kind of tired of um, uh, waiting for that, for the uh, stripper to kick in. So um, I'm just gonna start with 80 grit and see how that works. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. <laughs> so <laughs> let's hope this one works a lot better than uh, any of the paint strippers. thing that I forgot to mention is um, these are for a uh, six inch sander. I picked them up at Harbor Freight and uh, this is a four and a half arbor, or not an arbor, but a, a disc. 
so it's uh, horribly too big so I have to uh, cut them down because it's impossible to find a four and a half inch disc and uh, well you can find them online but they're really expensive so this is all that I have to work with now but it seems to be taking it down very nicely there and everything so just I guess gonna keep going with that I have no idea what GM put in their red oxide primer 50 years ago, but it is impossible to cut through. Like, I've already, I don't know, I've been at this for like 45 minutes already, and that's as far as I've gotten. It's just taking forever. Not to mention, I always have to like stop and cut the discs because, you know, they don't fit properly. So, I am going to be here for a while. Another thing that I have to be careful for is making sure that I'm not heating up the metal too much because then it can warp. So that's why I'm moving around really fast. Um, uh, my old hood, which I'll have to dig out and show you, just got really badly warped and the metal was too warped. And I've already talked about this, how it would tin can. But I'm pressing this and there's like no tin canning at all. I'll have to show you my other hood. So it's just something I gotta look out for. Another thing is I'm getting really tired of cutting these, so I wonder if I just put that right there in the middle, yep, right in the middle, if uh, that will uh, work and save me time. So let's find out. Okay, that took a very long time. I just don't get how in 50 years GM went from making red oxide primer that's like near impossible to sand to putting plastic bumpers on full-size pickup trucks. But whatever. Oh well. And that's So obviously I'm not done. Uh, you can see how it looks like right there. It looks dirty and it looks dirty. Well, that's just paint or primer that's still on there that I haven't gotten. Uh, it unfortunately got dark on me. It took me like two hours to sand this. And uh, yeah, so I have like here to do and then here. And then the ridge here, you never want to sand with a DA sander because that can bring down the ridge. You always want to do that by hand. So that's what I'm going to do there. And then of course, um, oh, I did find a few imperfections. Like that's some rust, rust, and some rust. Nothing that cannot be taken care of. I mean, again, I'm just so happy. Ooh, whoops so happy with this hood because like that one it's, it's it's just perfect then we go to the back side so there is some rust on the back side but what i'm going to do is get rid of all of the rust and then i'm going to sand this down but i'm going i'm not going to take it down to bare metal uh the reason being is because when i did my other hood or the hood that came with this car uh it took me weeks to do this like to sand it down uh, it just took forever and I really don't want to go through that again. So uh, I've done this before and you can do it. I One time I painted my Jeep and uh, I didn't take it down to bare metal. I just uh, sanded down what existing paint was there. And basically you use the existing paint as a uh, primer. And that's what I'm going to do on this. Sand down all the rust, get rid of it, buff that, take it to probably 160, one, I don't know. I don't even know what grit, but that's what I'm going to do. Uh... Yeah, because, you know, whatever. It's my car. So I got my other hood right here. It's behind my dad's car. But, um, so the reason why I gave up on this hood is because right here when I was sanding, actually, you know what? Let me get a light. Because right here when I was sanding, you can see that the uh, bottom layer came through. The metal just got really thin right there. And then here you can see like there, it's basically a box right there. We had to replace that and there's just a ton of rust and uh, the car also had a bunch of rust on it. So instead of sanding it, we did have to grind out the rust. 
uh, with a, uh, like a, not an angle grinder, like a giant grinder disc, basically. 27 grit is what we used. And it just took forever. And so from going from that to sanding to all of that, the hood right there, see? Oh, it's not focusing. Crazy tin canning. So let me show you the difference between this to this. Like, yeah, there's a little, but that's because it's hitting the uh, support below it. Uh, exciting news. I'm, I'm considering this fan mail. This is so exciting. Uh, a friend of mine uh, sent me these. Uh, this, I believe this one is the gasket that goes around the dipstick. And this one is the, uh, like a, like a guide for the belt. Um, that is lyrics to a song. So ignore that. Uh, yeah, so that's exciting. So Don, I know you're watching this. You always comment on my videos. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. This is really exciting. Uh, so I'm actually going to install those right away. Uh, but before I do that, I also did get my uh, brake hoses, and I already screwed them on so they do work. Uh, these are for the front suspension, and um, yeah, I got these from Rock Auto, so that, that's cool. So, going to be bleeding brakes here soon. So, but yeah, I think we should install these right away. That's really exciting. Ta-da! Look at that. That's the, it's not a tensioner. It's like a guide, a belt guide, I think. So got that screwed on there. Uh, I wasn't sure how close to get it, so I left about like my finger, the width of my finger there. This is for a crankcase vent tube, not the gasket for the dipstick. Okay, so the crankcase vent tube is right there. So right off cylinder number five. Ugh, so greasy. So, okay, well, uh, let's <laughs> let's install this then. Get the camera down in there. There we go, it's installed. That's awesome, had to put the gasket on. Uh, obviously had to take this out of the, uh, out of the little tube thing, <laughs> whatever it's called, put that on. So it's all installed, that's exciting. And we are back. Um, not quite sure how I remember leaving off when I was doing the hood. I do know that when I was stripping the hood, the front end, it wasn't in yet. So this video takes place over different amount of times. Anyway, so tomorrow uh, we are going to be renting a giant air compressor uh, because ours is unfortunately going out on us and it just can't keep up with even something as small as a die grinder. Something that small, it just can't keep up. So we're going to be ordering, or not ordering, but renting a giant air compressor. And we are going to be uh, uh, doing like sanding, like a wave board, air board. I always forget what it's called. Do I have one in the car? I, I don't. Oh, wait. No, there's one over here. We just picked this one up because ours is having problems. It's one of these, right? So we're going to get two of those going. And we're going to just basically go to town, overhaul this. Here's our uh, parts list so far. Um, so I have uh, these bolts here that hold on those brackets that hold on to the uh, brake lines right there. I have 24 new uh, hinge bolts that go there. Um, paint can. I'm going to see if I can pick up a rattle can of the paint color that I'm going to paint this so I can like do all the jams and everything and do the doors and then we're going to put the doors back on and then we're going to paint the whole car with the doors on that's the plan there uh, just some 80 grit sandpaper rubber grommets um, putty paper thing that's where you have like you put mixed putty on it and then when you're done you just rip off the paper and you have a new sheet um, uh, we need to look this up but do you need special primer for galvanized metal which is all of that and then my dad here made a list of everything that needs to be done. So like work on the quarter panels, rockers, doors, door jams. Here, honestly, if you just wanna pause right there and take a look at that, go right ahead. So that's like everything that we'd like to get started on today. Um, so yeah, I think we, don't, we unfortunately got a late start to the day, so we're getting lunch now and then we're gonna run into town and uh, go to the parts store and pick up basically everything here. And then, uh, yeah, go overhauling on this. And then tomorrow, of course, we're going to rent the air compressor. 
that's going to be exciting. I think we have to pull it behind a truck. If it's so big. So yeah, that's going to be exciting though. So I'm going to go and get something to eat and we will uh, see you maybe at the auto parts store or after. And we are back from the parts store. Um, what can I show you? I got 24 bolts here for the, oh, okay. 24 bolts for the uh, hinges, new door hinge bolts, because I needed that. Um, new washers for the door hinges. Uh, this thing, which I was talking about, how you put the putty on it and then you just tear it off when you're done. You also got this rubber grommet kit, which is what we needed. Uh, we got some scotch bright pads to rough up any primer that is ready to be painted. And, um, and then these bolts are for those brackets that hold on to the uh, brake lines. So there's that. I came out here and it looks like Dad had gotten just some black paint and kind of missed it over top of everything looking for high spots. That's what it looks like he did. Because I know right here it's kind of sunk. And uh, so I think he's going to be working on that. So, yeah, but, oh, man, look at those body lines. You cannot deny that the second gen Corvair is the best looking Corvair. I'm sorry, I just, I mean, look at that, how it bubbles out. Ah, oh, it's amazing. I love this car. Okay, so the first thing that I think I'm going to do is take my new bolts that hold these brackets on, clean them up, prime them, and uh, paint them, of course, and then get those mounted. And then here is one of the grommets. See, it's a blank, and that means that we can cut it to exactly what we need to put it in the space. So let me show you an example down here. Might be a little dark, but you see the two brake lines there? See how there's two of them? So I can make this custom to what I need and then uh, squeeze it in there and uh, call it good there. So stuff like that. And then a, a grommet goes, ooh, it is dark. Hopefully you cannot see that. See my finger right there, that's where it goes. So I'm gonna make two, three custom ones of these. So while the uh, paint is drying there, I will get to these. So while we got the, uh, the bracket bolts here drying over there, just put some paint on them. Here we got the uh, new grommets. Actually, we ended up getting a, uh, entire kit of just different rubber grommets but we got the uh, blank ones we got three of them here and so we're going to actually do this one separately so i'll put that one over here but anyway this goes um on the fender area so i have a three ace drill bit and uh you can kind of see the imprint hole right there so i have the drill bit in reverse I'm just going to like that. And I have a feeling that that probably won't be big enough to uh, fit over top of the fitting itself. So I think I'm going to go up one size of the drill bit and then we'll go from there. All right, so then this will go over top of that. However, I can't do this one-handed and hold the camera, so I'm going to uh, set it down for a second. All right, and just like that, it is. Those work? And yeah, they work great. Cool. Kind of hard to show with the camera and everything, but ta-da, and that is in there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do that one again, and then when we come to the uh, dual brake line one inside the car, we'll have to come up with a different solution for that. Okay, and for the next one, because there's two brake lines, I'm just gonna drill two holes there and then cut a slit into it to fit over the two. Explain what you're doing. When we welded this bottom piece in this patch panel, it was warped and caved in. And so I'm going to try to bring it back. See my pencil marks? 
This is a low spot, and that's low right here too. Okay. So we're gonna try to bring oh, that all back. All right, so we are starting to work on the door here, or both the doors, I should say. We're starting to uh, sand down the putty in certain places to get this ready to be primed. And then we discovered a high spot right there. You can see there and there if you shine it in the light. So looks like we're going to heat it up with the torch and then shrink down the metal. And uh, I'll show, I'll have Dad explain that to you. We're going to try to shrink them without using a dolly because I can't get behind them. So I'm going to heat them, work them down, and then shrink them with some water. That should, that should bring them in, should drop them some. Two high spots are affecting this whole area right here. Sometimes you can just let them air cool. Hmm, something seems to be smoking from the other side. Probably undercoating. <laughs> Probably. That actually seemed to have worked pretty good. A little bit. Seems I can see it's still high. So now, we have to let it wait because now that panel's warm, even though you put water on it. It's still warm. We'll let it cool down a little bit. And then we'll come in and we'll tack that one. Cool. And then come back and put a file on it, see what it looks like. I suspect this is still a little high. Okay. Okay. Right on. In the meantime, I just have like a spongy material and 80 grit, and I'm just going over top of here and here. And that's basically all the putty on here. There is some rust that I will address, but I'll do that with a DA sander. And then it looks like we do have some like rust maybe there and there. And what you do there is you take a uh, dull drill bit and uh, turn it in, put it in reverse, and it uh, eats away at that rust. And then we'll put a very thin coat of putty over it. See why I've been using the drill bit to etch out any um, any imperfections or rust or anything like that. Uh, I have a few at the bottom of the door there. You can see how pitted that was. I just got done there. I took the uh, wire wheel right there and went over top of places I had, that I already got, and that shows uh, rust. There you can see it's pretty bad. Um, there. Yeah, it just needs a little touch-up work. So it's a very tedious job, takes a lot of work, and uh, that's what we basically had to do on the entire car here. And then if we step over here, you can see that Dad's still um, dealing with some high spots there. And uh, I can already see rust there, so we're just going to have to do it to this door too. So when we're going to go and use body filler on those really small dents, you could use this. However, this stuff is meant for like bigger dents and uh, just bigger jobs basically and so um so okay let me explain so what had happened was i, I forget what the brand is called maybe you can see it from I just, i'm gonna have to do some explaining 
Okay, so I ordered this from Amazon Prime because that was the only place I could find it. And um, it's a really thin, it's like a top coat, no pinholes. It's just for really small dents and imperfections. So we got this. And uh, they never put the metal clips that hold the lid on. But they did wrap it in a bag, so that was nice of them. So all, all of a sudden, I get this in the mail. And I'm holding the box. I'm like, wow, that smells really strong of uh, filler. And I open it up, and it broke open. And just filler was everywhere. It was such a mess to clean up. And, like, it's I haven't even used this yet. And uh, it's half a container. The uh, This stuff is the uh, hardening cream. Is, uh, oh, boy. Uh, I don't even think. I don't know. That's going to come off very easy. So, thankfully, uh, I showed them pictures. They completely refunded my money. And uh, I got to keep what was left in the can. So, I am going to be getting another can of this. But in my notes, I'm going to be like, hey, can you make sure that, like, it doesn't spill everywhere? So, there's that. But we're going to crack this open. We're going to use that new board that we got. I'm excited about that. And we're going to test it out on the door and see how it goes. So, let me get this uh, cleaned up a little bit. And we will be on our way. We seem to have a little bit of trouble getting like some of the deeper rust out of there. So what we did is, um, that's not the original container. We are using something called metal conditioner and I actually got it from uh, my late grandfather who did a lot of body work throughout his life. And so uh, it's like one part body conditioner, two part water. So that's just stuff pre-mixed on a paintbrush and you like, you can see where I've done it. It stains the metal. Uh, like right there, you can see some deeper rust in there, uh, but it's actually, it chemically changes the rust, and so that's why it appears black. So then you do that, and you take water and um, baking soda, and that neutralizes rust. It also neutralizes uh, like paint stripper. So what I have here is just a uh, old shop towel. And we're going to scrub that away and just try to neutralize any leftover acid we have there if I can get close enough so it appears to be black but that is just some crazy pitting so I will have to uh, take care of some of that but I just did it on a few places I didn't want to do the whole door because you know that'd take forever but like uh, right there all right don't think I actually put some there I think that's just it stained all right, so we ended up getting a lot done. Um, I was hoping to like have like all of the car sanded and everything um, by the end of this video, but if I did that, the whole video would be probably close to about an hour and a half long. So I'm gonna wrap it up for this video, make it a part one and two. Um, and uh, yeah, and so this video will be wrapped up. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, the next video coming out, Hopefully soon uh, we'll have the air compressor, everything ready to go, and we're just going to sand a bunch of stuff on the car and maybe even start priming the doghouse and stuff like that. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and uh, remember, like, comment, subscribe. I've gained like 30 followers over the past uh, two weeks, so that's really exciting. I feel bad that I haven't put out a video in a while, but... Uh, I've just been really busy, but uh, I, I hope you guys enjoy this, and yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I really need to find a better way to end these videos, <laughs> but uh, we'll see you guys around.